stopping life. It's very difficult to face desperation. But it is a very good way because it has to, to do with looking, watching things as they are. There is something which is very close to this quality of freedom. It is the quality of truth. A truth which has nothing to do, which is not the opposite of lying. Which is not also an affirmation of anything. But it's a quality where you are you you just are with what is. Not trying to change anything. Just watching. Just being with what is. Now if we look at yourself, if we look at oneself, what we discover is that there seems to be layers and layers and layers and layers of memories. <clears throat> and many a times when we look at this memory, most of them, most of them, we are not proud of these memories. Many of us are not, it's difficult to be proud of one's life. Not only because what we have done, but also because of what we have not done and what we should have done. And uh, facing this situation, is it possible to, to embrace that reality, not to refuse it, and not to adore it, not to make uh, we could say kind of religion of oneself and not to reject oneself but to face it as we are. The moment we face as we are, this quality of freedom merges, shows up. Because the quality of truth bursts all of a sudden. Because we're not escaping and we are not building up ideas of how I should become, how I should be. We could say that, you know, we don't know exactly that uh, what we call homo sapiens, nobody knows precisely. Some people say it's one million, two million, three million years. Uh, there's been new discoveries of uh, little pieces of bones in Africa not very long ago, about seven millions. So, just for, for this one, we call Homo sapiens, but we know that this Homo sapiens had ancestors. So, Seven millions, let's say even three millions. It took about three millions to make people like us. Can you imagine that within a lifespan that is 70 or 80 years, you need to change the whole thing? Can we watch nature as it is and not cut ourselves from the nature? You know, we have this strange behavior that we think we can master nature. We, we do not include ourselves into nature. Who is going to master who? We are the nature. And this idea of mastering nature has come to a kind of totally crazy belief that is, I will change my whole nature. 
This is what has been taught for centuries in many spiritual movements, that I can change my nature. Who is this high who is going to change nature? Because nature, of course, is not mine. Nature is not personal. So who is this I who has this strange idea of changing? Is there something which is everlasting? When when one listen to oneself, not trying to find answers from outside ideas, theories. Is there something which is everlasting? We're not talking about the stars and galaxies and the, the cosmos. And by the way, uh, people were trying to study cosmos. They came to an idea that it had, it had a, a beginning. You heard about that. Some people think that it's about 13.8 uh, billions of years. Now, everything has been defined as having a beginning and an end, even if we don't like ending. You, you may ask yourself, did you ever end something? in your life? Did you ever really put a radical end to anything? And did you ever find a beginning in your life? Did you ever find something which is really completely radically beginning without anything before? Try to see, try to look at your life. Did you ever find something which had a beginning? Or, and did you ever end something? We rarely, rarely question things as they are. We are building up, once again, ideals of what should be. Now, if we put that kind of question, the questioning process is what I call a meditation. Because for that, you need a meditative state that is refusing everything which is not totally obvious. Refusing anything which is coming from somebody or some idea helps. But just doing with oneself. Now, is there something which is everlasting? How are we going to connect with that, if it exists? We don't say it exists, or we don't, we don't say it doesn't exist. We just put the question. How are we going to connect with this movement, which, is, which has no beginning and no end? If we say it doesn't exist, then the question is over. Let's go back, fighting. Because in each and every fight, there is always this. We fight because we want to achieve, we want to come to an end, we want, or we want to stop something new. 
in each and every idea of becoming, there is the necessity in the mind, in the conditioned mind, that there must be a new start. A few days ago I had a talk with a lady. Uh, she, she told me, uh, I've met a new man. I know her since many, many years. And uh, there are about maybe 20 partners. And she's changing pretty often. And she said, uh, I'm st starting again. I said, what? You're starting again? 20 times is not enough? Why don't you start for real and not again? So we have this in mind, that we have to start again. And this very idea of having to start again, which once again comes from becoming, I have to, I must become something, or somebody, something, something else. It is very much linked deeply to time. Now, if we say, I'm free right now, it's not only a question of saying it, it's a question of living it. Can you accept that this now had nothing to do with time? Sometimes people say, okay, if, I'm, if, I, if I become free, would it last? So we lost again, we stuck again. That is, as, as they say in the here, they say, silent mind is holy mind. So, is it possible to be totally silent. Not meaning that we don't speak, but meaning that the thought as is silent. For human beings, Imagining that a thought is silent, for many of us, is very frightful. Because this is the particular particularity of mankind. We are thinking. Today we know that cats, elephants, some animals seem also to, to have the same brain activity. So we think that maybe they have a very primary process of thinking, but they are not capable of making any concepts. And when we say that silent mind could be the answer, that is, when the conditioning has vanished, I'm not saying that it has stopped forever, it has vanished. Are we afraid of being a kind of alien? Because once again it is the particularity of mankind, thinking. You know, everything here has been built by thought. Everything. The, the chair, the, the walls, your cloth, uh, your cars and houses. Everything has been built up by thought. Today, we are also making human beings by thought. You know, we have this capacity today of couples say, shall we do a child? The thinking is first. So we hope, even bringing a new human being is today going through thinking. So it's a very powerful activity. 
It is completely building up the world. And now somebody comes and says, this meditative mind, which has to do with complete freedom, which requires a silent mind. It is, we could, you could say it's a kind of scandal saying such a thing, because it means we are not plants. Genetically, we are not very far. Very, 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 very near. Very near. <clears throat> but we think we are not. But what or what 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 could it mean to be silent? You might have noticed that when you're facing another person, most of the time you are we are exchanging <coughs> ideas and very often it goes into arguing. Sometimes little, sometimes big argue. But it comes to this situation as uh, either we agree or we don't agree. And many times we try to convince the other. Did, did you ever try to convince? Of course you did. Did it work? Uh -huh. So when it works, how do you feel? Did you ever ask how the other person feels? That is, 